Welcome everybody to Eye of the Serpent Tarot for another Pick a Card reading. So today we're looking at what is your secret advantage? What is your secret source, as people sometimes say? The, the allure, the skills, the talents, the magic that you have that people may see, may see part of, may find you incredibly alluring and mysterious because of. And the inspiration for doing this particular reading came from receiving recently a tarot deck from a Kickstarter campaign that I backed for a tarot called the Masquerade Tarot. So it's a very beautiful tarot. It's actually size-wise a bit smaller than the average tarot deck, which means we're going to be able to probably get a few more cards on the table, which will be kind of cool. But the thing that really attracted me to it is that it is it is all about the masquerade. It sort of has that Venetian masquerade ball sort of aesthetic to it. So that sense of mystery, what we may have that we hide a little bit, but we show a little bit of. So that's what I'm trying to get to, the sort of thing that is uniquely you, the thing that, that as I say, people probably see some of, and then they're also very intrigued by the rest of. So that's what we're looking at and, and how that all plays out for you to your advantage in this set of readings. So what I thought to set the scene and get a bit of an overview of your, your particular secret advantage and then we'll sort of explore it with the tarot, as I say, is I thought I'd use a deck that I think has a kind of a similar feel and aesthetic. It's, not, it's based actually on the circus rather than on a masquerade, but that has a similar sort of aura of mystery and magic and allure. So this is the Divine Circus Oracle. So I shuffled, I'm just putting out the numbers for those who like that for the piles, and asked Spirit to give me for each pile a representation from this deck that shows something about your secret advantage, your secret allure, your secret source, as I say, or special source. And so for pile number one, we have the Velvet Queen. For pile number two, we have Steampunk Priestess. And for pile number three, we have Voice of an Angel. So... Maybe that imagery, that kind of sensation will draw to you. Otherwise, you know, you might go to a particular number. That's completely up to you. Whatever works for you is fine. Uh, as I say, we'll, we'll delve into the, the Masquerade Tarot. And by the way, that's by uh, an organization or a publishing house called Fatum. And as always, the, the uh, details about where you can get the deck, if you would like to, is in the description box below. But this is our... Entry point to the to the to the masquerade to your secret secret source, as I say. So whatever works for you, pause the video if you need to. But when you know what reading, all readings by all means go to more than one if you would like and you feel drawn to it. But when you know, the timestamps as always are in the description box below, and I'll see you there. Welcome, pile one, to your reading. So you came to the reading with the Velvet Queen, and what we also have is some astrology to get us get a bit of an idea about what aspect or area of life might be being impacted you know most with your particular secret advantage some color energy for you and also some of your own personal magic and this is interesting because this could be in any aspect of life but in whatever aspect of life it is there is something about change reinvention transformation you are the master of transformation you are almost like a living butterfly if I could in in that the butterfly goes through such a massive transformation the caterpillar to the butterfly and becomes more beautiful or at least to our eyes um, when that occurs there is sort of something about you that speaks of transformation and of being able to accept and reach towards the highest outcomes because the velvet queen is all about surrendering and transforming to let your greatest dreams come in I actually think with with this sort of energy when this is sort of like things about the nervous system seeking balance, I think that most of you either work in or, you know, create in very sort of changing, volatile sort of circumstances, areas or whatever, or you have a lot of relationships around you that are transformative and and progressive in one form or another. So what is happening here is that part of your secret allure is that you appear to be able to go through change transformation almost effortlessly. You seem to, as I say, embody it. You could be doing that in some sort of a workplace, being a change agent, or you could be in sort of political or social causes around that. But even if not, it's like when people look at you, they see that you can change. Like a, a, somebody that's coming to my mind is someone like David Bowie 
who was sort of such a chameleon. His artwork, he was able to change, sort of, and it seemed effortless. I'm sure there was a lot of planning and creativity and structure behind it, but it, it, part of the mystery and the allure that he had was that. There are other artists and creative people that transform themselves. In some way, it's actors going from role to role. Any of those sort of things, they're just analogies for what I'm talking about, though you might literally do something like that for your career as well, or for your creative work. But you are, you are deeply transformative and able to, to pick up the pieces and aim for something more. And this card talks about owning your own glory and owning the, the belief that you could actually have the greatest prize of all to move from poverty consciousness into prosperity consciousness and that sort of thing. So some of you may literally be a rags to riches story already or one in the making that could be part of the allure. So that's that may literally be something that you're doing. Or it could be that you represent the best in something and that people are inspired to change to be like you in some way. Now, the thing that I think is interesting is what's sort of underneath this in terms of your energy is that, that you actually, a lot of what you do is behind the scenes. People don't see it. There is actually quite a lot that you do keep hidden. And I think it's partly because you're always internally seeking balance and the way you find it and the way you, you settle your own nervous system is to be open to the change that's required. But to other people, this looks effortless. This looks like it's just part of your DNA. So they're not actually fully understanding how much you're balancing things. And that sometimes that can be a bit overwhelming. You may also be mysterious to people because you seem to be in change all the time and people don't necessarily know when they're next going to see you because you are always in flow. So you might be the sort of person who has strong friendships, but you may not talk to somebody for quite some time and then you come back into their life and they have to kind of get used to that. So there's a bit of a sort of a mystery around that. But you are always in the process of reinvention and, and, and striving for the greatest of things. And people don't understand what's going on behind the scenes because you seem just like this character looks very, very serene in the midst of all of this, very, very serene. The other thing that I think that this is talking about with Mercury retrograde, talking about reinvention here, is that you are able to break through and clarify situations where communication has gone awry because Mercury retrograde is often that. It's often when, you know, like your electronics go awry or, you know, emails go missing, all that kind of thing. The thing that, you know, people generally joke about, oh, it's Mercury retrograde when that sort of thing happens. So I think there's something in you where you can actually break through and clarify that. And again, it's sort of like you're always like a radar. You've got a radar for what's going on. And where that needs to be sort of fixed in negotiations or, or you know, peacekeeping or anything like that, you're an absolute natural. And as I say, people it's aspire to you, but that what they don't understand is that you're constantly, you're constantly kind of balancing yourself within because of the amount of change and stuff that you show outside. So it, it makes me think of the sort of analogy, you know, where, where people sort of see a duck or a swan sort of like floating across the water and it looks serene, but underneath the, the little feet are paddling really fast. That's kind of you, but the people don't see that as part of the mystery. And so they just see you as this incredible changing person in flow. And as I say, able to reach your aspirations or in fact represent something aspirational. So that's pretty interesting for anybody who wants to be, you know, on the stage and screen or in some way an influencer. This is, would, would be a very, very powerful sort of secret advantage to have. So let's have a look with the tarot with a little bit more detail about what this secret advantage is. And then we're going to have a look at what do others see? You know, what are they seeing of it? And then we're going to see you know, what do you keep on the down low and why? So, first of all, just a little bit more information about that. So, the Knight of Pentacles, the Knight of Wands, the Three of Pentacles reversed, the Fool reversed, the Hanged Man reversed. Yeah, you are reinvention, different ideas than you, definitely. The Moon reversed. The Nine of Pentacles. Okay, a lot of you, this is around your workplace or your creative life. It could, you know, also come into relationships, but this is very sort of creative and work oriented. It starts with where you are committed to, to work sort of things, where you're sort of seeing something through, being able to see a whole change process through from beginning to end. Many people, in fact, if you look at organisational work and organisational change as an example, uh, either the people institute the change, the, the people who 
go through the change or the people who sort of like then set things up at the end of the change. I think this is saying you see it all the way through. It's one of the reasons why you seem such a natural in this because most people have a skill in one of those three areas and that's what they tend to do and move in and out of organisations to do that. So I think any of you who are doing it as a career, you have a capacity to go from end to end and you do it in a highly independent way. Like you're most likely to use these sort of skills like as a consultant or something like that rather than as an, as an employee and you could easily use this sort of ability in some form of private business that you do very well with and you are able to be independent with. You also bring quite a lot of creative flair to things and you know how to balance when to move fast and when to move slow because this is like one of the slower nights and this is one of the faster nights and I think this is just showing you have things in balance. You do know what you're doing. You've been through this. I think you've been through it since you were young. I'd say when you were a child, you probably kind of grew up and matured quicker than most kids did. You kind of like, you, you just you just change and you evolve very naturally. And you understand that in the process of doing that, sometimes things that you put energy into, you let go of. But you're, you're very pragmatic, very pragmatic about doing this because you look at things differently to other people. You see things coming up to the surface being dealt with and then being sort of like made into something that's manifest and better as the aim to have. A lot of people couldn't be in your energy pile whatnot, in the sense of like they can be with you, but they couldn't have your energy because you're able to be in the heart of the chaos. You're able to see that. You're able to look at it. It doesn't phase you. In, like like with that Pluto strongly very strong person around this you, you don't you don't get frightened easily you you have anxiety about keeping everything in balance but but that's just your awareness you're aware you can see what is different you've seen this before that's partly how you manage things but you are about dissolving things that are no longer a foundation to bring in something that will grow so I do think for most of you this is largely playing out around career so let's see what do others see of this in you? Like what, what is really obvious to other people in your sort of secret, that is your secret advantage? The Empress. The Tower reversed. Justice. Ace of Wands. The Sun. Wow, you're very strong. The Knight of Cups reversed. Okay. So what people say, very charismatic, very nurturing, even in times of change, able to take again people and, and situations through change incrementally, you're in control, you know what you're doing. Like people absolutely trust you. If, you. if any kind of crisis, basically, people would look to you because you would be the serene person who would know how to deal with things, definitely. And they see you as being very, very fair, very fair. So again, if you were in some sort of organisational change, you would be seen as a fair sort of mediator to sort of bring things about, that you're not going to do anybody over. It's like it does make me feel that many of you could come into organisations or into situations as a kind of mediator or something like that because it's almost like you are either above your own personal interests, like people think that you're more for what is right than just what suits you, or you literally have a role, like a legal role or a mediation role or something like or a balance role, that, that, that people trust. And they also see you, as I say, incredibly charismatic with the Ace of Wands and the Sun there. You probably draw a lot of uh, attraction <laughs> of the more sort of romantic or otherwise kind to you because of this sort of like sense of, of as I say, creative mystery and creative power. Very, very, very attractive. But I think that most people feel they couldn't approach you on that level. <clears throat> so occasionally coming across someone similar to you, they may, but I think most people you kind of overawe a little bit. So if that's if you're finding yourself being alone quite a bit, that might be why. And you might need to sort of be the one who initiates something because you sort of don't come across as being sentimental and you're not coming across as, as making emotional offers to people. It's more that you're keeping keeping everything on balance and going through change and so forth. So it's just, just remember that if you're kind of thinking, gee, I always seem to be on my own. It might be that you're kind of intimidating people a bit, so to be aware of it. So then what do you keep on the down low? What are you really trying to sort of keep very much to yourself around your secret advantage? The Five of Wands reversed. The King of Pentacles reversed. The Seven of Swords. The Ten of Swords. 
five of swords oh okay you're formidable that's <laughs> you are formidable okay so you show to people as i say the charisma the nurturing the taking people through change that you're doing the right thing and i think you are by much i think you work on the side of the angels what you don't show people is how you're doing it and that's sort of that balance you know the power of balance and the sort of nervous energy you really kind of don't show the, the workings of this you don't show how you minimize and get rid of conflict in fact you wouldn't be likely to go in and say i'm here to deal with conflict you would be much more likely to go in and say what is the right thing to do how do we find the right thing to do and how do we deal with miscommunication you're also not conventional at all this is the different way of looking at things and i would suspect you have a somewhat unconventional political approach or social values or whatever so so part of this change process for you even if it plays out on a career or in sort of like finding the sort of balance in situations around friends family or whatever is around changing the current order you really do want the new and you know how to negotiate you really know how to negotiate and when others would be saying that's enough, you know, I can't deal with this anymore. You are tenacious as hell. So what people don't say, there's a very steely, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just looking at these three swords cards. There's a very steely undercurrent to all of this, which might also be why you intimidate people a bit, but they don't really know what this is. But you, you have a very long-term change agenda that you're dealing with on one level or another around whatever this is. And it, you're very, very strong and you're very, very clear and you won't give up. So, but you may appear to be almost, almost so fluid that it wouldn't matter. But the reality is underneath everything, you know what balance you want to bring in and you will bring it in. You, you do not walk away from the battlefield. So people better not think that they can do that. But I think by and large, most kind of just go, I feel comfortable. I feel safe with this person. I think they're going to be fair. Uh, I think that they're, they're strong. There's courage there. I don't fully know why they're doing it because I can't even fully see what their personal interest is in this. I think for you, it's a, it's it's transpersonal. It's not, you will probably do well out of it, but it is, it is a bigger thing for you. It's like a social or a political or a spiritual war that you're you're battling and and you you don't show all the movable parts but that's what's driving you rather than personal stuff so there's something very it's not selfless in the sense of you know you, you're self-sacrificing but it, it, if people were trying to guess your motivations and they projected onto it very personal motivations they wouldn't be understanding you pile one so very interesting so what i wanted to do to lay on top of this sort of concept about your 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 secret advantage which as i say is is the sort of combination of just seeming to be right and righteous without showing the movable parts and having this kind of transformative charisma that people are drawn to i also wanted to use a trilogy of trilogies here i wanted to do three wild cards for you three fortune cards for you and three astrology cards for you so a kind of a triptych of each around other aspects that play out either to your advantage or might challenge you around your secret advantage overall so firstly the wild cards and this may be more elements of your secret advantage or they may be things that you have to be aware of so firstly breathe breathe in breathe out. yeah this is underneath everything as i say because you are tenacious you're not going to give up but you you this does actually give you a kind of a. uh uh, a nervous tension underneath all of it so it is there i think you keep it quite hidden but this is sort of something that's important to be able to kind of like return into yourself and find equilibrium and find balance you do have the magic to be able to do it but you have to admit to yourself that you need to do it pile one then we also have weed out get rid of things that are not wanted make room for something new so your natural thing is towards change but you know what is possible is that in the midst of doing that if you're always on the on the prize you're always focusing on the prize and you're always moving through there may be the debris of the cleanup like it would be interesting i was a change agent for a lot of my my work and i've moved around quite a bit in my life but i seem to be able to manage to accumulate you know so much stuff um in the process of, of you know because i'm focusing on other things so it may be again what what could you do within your life to clear things out so that you can relax more given the change energy around you and lost who are you where are you going what is the purpose or, or 
meaning in your life. Okay, I actually think this is part of how you confuse people a bit, and this is a Mercury retrograde as well. People can't figure out, and this could be good, this could be to your advantage. You have to work out whether, particularly around love relationships or things like that, whether that could confuse things, so it's something to think about. Maybe if, if there is sort of people who are very close to you, you want to make sure they don't think it's all kind of lost and unclear. But I think for most people, you're quite happy for them not to really know the map that you're following. Okay, let's see fortune energy around you. Part one. The serpent, a sly and subtle approach is needed. Well, you've got that all over. <laughs> But you are, I think this is just, it's just showing the same energy. You're around high stakes issues. You're naturally drawn to high stake issues. So, and I don't think it's a bad approach for you. I think this is a good approach. I think if people saw all of this, you would be really overwhelming. I think sometimes you have to keep the, the genius under the carpet a bit. We also get the queen, love and prosperity. So you're meant to, to be aspirational to others, to get what you want, just as the velvet queen said. And I think this is maybe a little bit of a tilt towards don't don't become somebody who doesn't get the love and prosperity for themselves. You are actually due some sort of recompense in your own dreams, not just this bigger picture thing that you're dealing with, Pile 1. And the black cat, your luck will soon change. I think you would know. So if you are hitting a roadblock, it's about to clear. If things are going really well, prepare for the next battle because you would know this energy. This is the energy of change. Things go, you know, in, in flow. It gets better, it gets harder, it gets better, it gets harder. So wherever you are in the flow, it's about to shift, but it will shift again. And then a trilogy of astrology advice for you, part one. The first quarter moon, picking up speed, make decisions, align actions and words. So, okay, something's starting to speed up a bit and probably off the back of whatever this change is, whether it's sort of a downturn that's making you have to kind of concentrate and do something differently or whether you have some advantages coming your way and it's now time to do something. But that's also why clear everything out. Get yourself calm and ready. Make sure you know where you're going because things are about to speed up. Sex doll. Things will be easier than you think. Well, actually, you have sometimes had to have battles. So I was about to say, someone like you, this is a lot easier for than most anyway. But And that's part of your secret advantage. But you have hit battles where you've had to be tenacious. You may feel that that's coming, particularly if this is moving towards, if things have been going well and you can sense something coming up where you're going to have to recalibrate your intentions. But it will be easier than you expect, pile one. And fifth house could be bringing in love and romance and you are meant to have something like that or well, this could be very creative there could be a creative approach that's important and I, I feel like you should be recognized for this more and I think you will be I think you will be because I think there is that double message of the Velvet Queen it's both moving into that mindset yourself that actually starts to take on your own sovereignty but also you know becoming aspirational to others representing that in some creative way okay so last but not least, because I think we, we have a clear idea, you know, what your particular secret advantage is, and it's a significant one, particularly if you want to do this in any form of sort of career, but even just in your, your general relationships with people, because there's a hell of a lot of change going on in the world, and we need people like you. So your, your skills are going to become more and more important. What I wanted to finish with was a blessing from the Fae, because I felt like a blessing is an important thing to sort of round off an exploration of your secret advantage. So for you, a blessing from a fairy determined to help you. All right. Okay. So there is a subtext to all of this reading, I've got to say. There is the overall thing that you are the consummate change artist. You are the consummate chameleon. You are the consummate change agent. You are all of those things. You are as strong as hell. People don't even have any idea how much that is. And it's probably just as well because you're probably already a bit intimidating. But you do have a lot of charm, you know, and a lot of allure. So that gets past that but I think this is saying there's been a few hints to it around the, the the queen coming up saying love the knight of cups reversed I think there is something here in the fifth house where you're meant to also have love you're meant to to or and if, if you're already in a relationship then it's then other relationships other friendships I think there's something a little bit lonely about this energy and so I think the blessing coming to you is, is determined to help you so that you get that into balance and so that you 
allow yourself that because I think you do have a big purpose and a big mission, part one, but you also deserve love and time out and caring and fun. Everything doesn't have to be earnest and everything doesn't have to change rapidly. So I hope that that resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 2, to your reading. So you came to the reading with the steampunk, pre steampunk priestess as your sort of like first indication of your particular secret advantage. Then we've got some astrology cards to show the kind of aspects or elements of your life that this could be impacting, your practical magic and also a colour energy. The key thing about the steampunk princess, which kind of then this builds upon, I think, is that she has incredibly clear vision. Her intuition is spot on. The way she sees things is spot on. Part of your secret advantage is no one can pull anything over you, basically. There's actually a, a series, I think it's on I think it's on Netflix, but it might be on one of the other streaming services anyway. And I can't even remember it, the name of it at the moment, but it's Poker Face, I think. Poker Face. And it's about, and I haven't watched it yet, but I've sort of got it on my list because it looks interesting. It's about a detective who has this amazing ability to know when anybody is lying. And that's the kind of energy I get about this. Like, as I say, nobody can pull the ball over your eyes. You're very, very clear seeing. And it's interesting, we have Aquarius, I know. There's a kind of a detachment that you have, and with the earth element, a kind of a practicality. It's like you have the emotional strength, definitely, so, so that is that is, and how you can be in the eye of the storm and understand what's going on, as this says. So you you kind of have the strength to understand things emotionally, get detached enough and practical enough to be able to see anything for what it is. And as a result, you attract the right relationships to you. In fact, I think you would scare away the relationships that were wrong. And this could be hard one. You could say, oh, you know, Helen, I've, I've been through some really difficult relationships and maybe that's true. But you've got to the point now, part of your secret advantage is that you're not going to get fooled again if that was the case. You really do know how to how to communicate and connect and bring the right people in. And it could be any type of relationship. I mean, this is implying a love relationship, but it could be any type of relationship. You, you have a secret advantage because basically, as I say, you're very clear. And it also means when it's a good relationship, you're going to know it's a good relationship. Your instincts are going to be really right. So one of the things I feel like saying really quickly is don't crowdsource an opinion on your love life. You know, you, you're going to be clearer on this than anybody. You're going to know if you don't have enough information and you'll have the sense to be able to wait till you get it. But beyond that, you know, if you feel the connection, then you're going to be right. And if you feel that something's niggling and not right, you're going to be right again. So you, you have your vision, your insight, your understanding, your intuition are off the charts and it gives you an enormous emotional strength and it really helps you around making you have the right relationships around you. So let's get a little bit more information with Tarot. So we're firstly going to ask a little bit more detail about this secret advantage. Then we're going to talk about what do others see in you and then we'll look at what do you keep on the down low and why so firstly a little bit more information about the secret advantage that you have seven of pentacles ace of swords eight of wands reversed six of wands reversed three of swords Ace of Wands reversed, Seven of Swords reversed. Okay, so I said I thought that this might have been a hard one advantage, and I think it has been. I think that you have learned a lot. The thing about you is you don't have to learn something twice, which is an extremely strong advantage because a lot of people keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. You're not like that. You've got a really good sense about what has a growth potential and what doesn't. You have the patience to and the stability to bring it into being. Your, your perception, your telepathy is off the charts, actually. You're highly telepathic. Do not think that you're wrong, as I say. You really do see this. You, know, you, may, you may also have an extremely good sense of things like um, the kind of the, the material side of things as well, too. You know, what's the foundations of something telepathically? You may have some of the clear senses that are very much in the body and the sense of things in the body, so pay attention to that. But your telepathy is off the charts. But... You've learned this from being held back and not being seen. The other thing about this actually I'm getting is that 
part of the reason you have this, and so it's going to be very interesting to see the next two rows, which is what people see and then also what you keep on a down low, is that people don't fully know how much you see. It reminds me as a friend of mine who would tell me, and it wasn't so much her vision, but her hearing was off the charts, and she said that she'd sit in cafes and that and that she would hear conversations two or three tables away, and she'd think it's amazing what people talk about in cafes when they think nobody's listening. And for the most part, nobody is, but because her, her hearing was so acute and she would often sort of go and read a book or whatever, then she would hear this stuff. And you're a bit like that sort of either with visuals or it could be hearing. It doesn't even have to be. I mean, this is, looks like sight, but something, the information that's coming in, and people underestimate this. They don't know how rapidly you think and assimilate things. One of the things also that I read once about intuition, it was by um, a guy called Gavin De Becker who wrote a book called The Gift of Fear, and he's a security specialist. Uh, he was saying that what people think of as intuition, and I do think there's a psychic into intuition, and I think you're telepathic and all that kind of thing, but he was also talking about often what people mean when they say that, or they mean instinct, is it's very, very rapid thought, much faster than we actually realise. We're taking in information and stimulus, and we're, we're coming to conclusions, and when we get a gut instinct about something, quite often it is if you actually sat down and you parsed it out, you would see the very things that you saw or heard and how you associated them very rapidly in your mind with other things to come to a conclusion. You're able to do that, but people people can't see it. People don't see that you're able to do that. So, and you may well be hiding some of this, we'll sort of see, but in any case, part of it is that people might let down their guard around you and show themselves to you. And you are able to see where the pain points are and know whether those are pain points that the person can't help and that you could help with or whether they're going to cause pain in the meantime. You're really realistic about it. You've been burnt. You've been burnt before, but you don't get burnt twice. You learn once and that's it. So let's see what people understand and see of this secret advantage. King of Cups. The King of Wands reversed, the Ten of Cups reversed, the Star reversed, Strength, the Four of Pentacles reversed. People do underestimate you in a way, like not, not in the sense, I mean, I think that they do see you as very strong in many ways and they see you as able to kind of like get to the core of things and find where things aren't working. So so they see that. They also see you as being incredibly emotionally mature. So this emotional strength that you have, people see that and they rely on that. They think perhaps you've been hurt before or burnt before, so that may be part of the story. It could even have come from family with 10 of cups reversed, but they don't. You've got a quiet charisma actually. It's not showy. It's not showy. You almost have glamour magic. You're almost a little bit invisible. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I don't mean that people sort of look down on you. But it's sort of like it's almost they kind of sense it, but they don't even know what they're sensing. They sense this sort of something quite amazing, but it's a little bit uh, on the down low and it's a little bit sort of hidden underneath all the hysteria that you might be seeing and bringing strength and balance to and, and emotional balance to. So people primarily see your secret advantage or you as someone who brings that emotional maturity and clarity to things. They kind of sense there's something else underneath it, but they're not fully seeing it. So let's ask, what are you keeping on the down low, Pile 2? Knight of Cups. The sun reversed, five of swords, nine of cu cups reversed, judgment reversed. Okay, I must say, if you fall in love, you don't tend to show it, you tend to wait to see if the other person is going to come towards you. It's almost like you've kind of realised from being burnt or something like that, you need to do that. You need to see what they do, what action they take. So it may well have been one of the lessons that you've learned. So attractions that you have, you kind of keep on the down low. You also don't want people to see too much of what you can do and how clearly you see. So you could have been in relationships or situations where that was a bit of a liability for you. Also, I don't think you've fully worked out what you want to do with this yet, with the sun reversed. There's things you're still clearing away from that have happened before before you fully know what you want to do about it. And you're not telling people that. You don't want them to know that you're kind of sorting that out, that you don't know what your your ultimate emotional goal is. You're not ready to make the decisions. 
So I think it's like there's almost like part of your focus on others at the moment and dealing with the troubles of others. It is it is selfless in many ways and you're extremely good at it and people see that. But it's partly also because you're not wanting people to look too closely at you. It's almost as though because you're so good at reading other people in situations, you realize how powerful that is. And I think that you you use it very responsibly, but you know that it could be used against you, you know, even you know, consciously or unconsciously. So I think you keep a lot of what your true heart is and your true wishes and dreams are very much to yourself. So let's give you a triptych of trilogies. What I want to do here is I want to look at three wild cards for you, three fortune cards and three astrology cards, just to sort of like round out either a bit more about your secret advantage or about... Things you need to think about when most using that secret advantage, Paul too. So firstly, the wild cards. Answer unclear, unknown. Okay, I think that's you. I think that I think that part of your allure is you're very mysterious because you're so clear about everything else, but people know so little about you. <laughs> so I think, you know, that may be that may be good. As long as it doesn't detach you too much from people, then then I think that probably works for you. Friendship, you need your friends, yeah, but you need friends. So maybe this is part of the thing. It's a lot of don't, you've got a very good eye for who the friend should be. I want to keep those eyes visible here, I think. But it is important that you don't detach too much. And drama, situational person with too much drama. So, so I think this ability, you, you get drawn into dramas and other people's dramas. But remember, you do have friends as well, too. If you're always the person who's solving the drama, then, then you know, like you're not necessarily getting the support that you deserve. Let's get you three cards of fortune that are important to think about. The dragon, strength and wisdom. Yeah, you are strong and you are wise. And this, to me, is also a very strong guide around you. It's a very strong energy of magic around you to protect you. We also have the Harlequin, true feelings are masks. Yeah, this is the thing. You do a little bit. This And it's falling with you need your friends. If there's one thing that Spirit really wants you to think about in all of this is maybe it's okay to tell your friends that all you, though you see very clearly on so many things, you haven't fully worked out all your stuff yet. You know, because otherwise, because like other people who are trying to hide it from you, I'm not going to be able to because you'll st see too clearly. But do you, do you limit yourself a bit by not, not showing yourself? And the night, triumph over adversity. So, yeah, if you are worried and if you have had difficulties and some of this is hard, hard one, you don't need to learn twice and you are going to triumph. So, so back yourself on that, pile two. Okay, let's get you three pieces of astrology support as well. Mars. Okay, action. Action is called for here. And that's part of this. I think it has to do with making sure that you connect with your friends and you connect with those because there's something that is a little bit detached about this. It's sort of like it is helping other people with emotional balance and so forth and being very other person centered, but it can make you almost like a journalist of life rather than a participant in life. So I think it's very important to, to think about what action you want to take. Taurus. And, yeah, and what kind of life? What's the dream? You see, because you, you haven't really worked that out yet. Something's happened, part two, that made you kind of doubt whether you could be fully happy or fully who you wanted to be. And it, it's almost like then you focused everything outside. And you're so brilliant at this. But if you let a few people in and you focus some of that inward, you know, you can really create the life that you want. And because remember, you have the wisdom, the knowledge, the stability, all of those things, the vision. And Jupiter, yeah, you're meant to have luck. You're meant to have fortune. You're meant to expand. You're meant to have a bit of joy. This is the one thing. What you're keeping on the down low is that you're you're so focused externally and on understanding the horizon and you're so good at environment scanning. But like, what would make you happy? What gives you the life you want? That's what you should be acting towards. Okay, so to finish off, having sort of looked at your, your secret advantage, which is your incredible vision and incredible emotional maturity, what is a blessing? And we're asking for a blessing from the Fae that could bring all this together for you. I'll do. A blessing of being understood. You need your friends. 
You understand. Your understanding of others is off the charts, as I say. Your vision and your accuracy is off the charts. And it may be that and, and life circumstances have made you very wary. But you need to be understood too. You're a genius, a genius at understanding others. But you need to be understood too because then you'll be able to take the actions to, to make yourself happy. So if you are always the one who is the understanding one, you're always the one dealing with other people's drama. So I think there is, there is a message in here about your vision can tell you. You will know who are the friends you can trust. It's just not been your natural reflex because of stuff that you've been through. But finding the friends that you can trust, being understood by them, being seen by them as opposed to just being the one who sees, that's important for you. It's important for your balance and for you to be truly happy. So I hope that this resonates. I hope it was helpful. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, part three, to your reading. So you've come to the one with the voice of an angel. We've got some astrology energy for the type of area in life that this is impacting, some color energy for you, and also your own personal magic to give me a bit of an overarching theme for your secret advantage. Now, there's an obvious literal secret advantage that could apply here and it might be the reason you came voice of an angel it could be that you have a beautiful speaking or singing voice or that you are very creative particularly musically poetically eloquent any of those sort of things so you definitely have you know the gift of the gab a beautiful speaking voice a beautiful singing voice something like that that could very much be it otherwise you are incredibly inspired that is what this is particularly talking about this card is saying that you are getting inspiration muse energy whatever you want to call it and you should trust it because it is actually something special. You, you have a special creative or innovative way of doing things. And some people sort of balk at that and they go, I'm not creative because I don't paint or I don't sing. But, you know, there are many different ways of being creative. And this, this card is saying that your secret advantage is that there's a direct kind of line of inspiration and you have the capacity to articulate it in one way or another using the voice of an angel. It is also saying that it is time not to doubt yourself. And part of your magic now is being able to face your, your fear, to, to tilt towards passion and power and not fear. This looks a lot like the strength card to me in tarot. So this is, this is really saying you're in a strong position. You have the skills, you have the connection, all of that sort of thing, and to trust that. It's meant to help you expand. It's meant to bring you luck. It's meant to bring you benefits. And you're meant to be seen and going towards what is your special message with Leo. For a lot of people coming here, this could be showing you know, some sort of career or vocation in the sort of performing arts in some way but if it's not literally that then you you're meant to be seen and you're meant to have luck and it's, your inspiration is meant to be there you've just got to have the, the the power and the passion and i think there's a lot of color and energy and diversity to what you do this also talks about connecting to fairies in nature now interestingly the last card in this reading is going to be a blessing of the face so i think that's going to be particularly important here but i think for the theme it's just there's something beautiful and magical and natural in your inspiration and in your creativity in whatever form it takes and you're meant now to do something with it but you you really do have to back yourself. That's that's the important thing. So let's use the tarot and get a bit more information. We're going to start asking for a bit more detail about this secret advantage you have. Then we're going to ask what others pe other people see in you in this way. And then we're going to ask what you keep on the down low and why. So what, what more can Spirit tell us about your secret advantage, your special source, Pile 3? King of Pentacles, you're definitely meant to make money out of this. Page of Pentacles, yeah, yeah. It's definitely something that you could turn into some form of a business, this ability. Queen of Swords, very, very articulate, very smart energy. Ten of Swords, able to deal with drama. The Moon reversed. Nine of Pentacles. Five of Cups reversed. Okay, so... For a start, whatever this is, is meant to make you money. It sort of fell where Jupiter was too, so it makes perfect sense. Make money, start a business, have a business plan. Know what you want, know what you can create. You can really, with your will and your, and your intuition and your in inspiration, you can create, you can manifest. Your mind is very sharp, so when you, when you actually have this come through, you're going to be able to put in the kind of structure that you need for that. So it's, it's very practical and mental that you can do it. You know, I think this is very emotional and inspirational and fiery, but you, you can really translate that very, very well. And you're not afraid of drama. In fact, I think, 
again, I feel like a lot of you, you know, might be singers or writers or something like that. There's, there's something where coming out of emotional disappointment and drama, that's, there's something like, it makes me think of creative artists who often say, you know, when I'm, when I'm in pain, that's when I'm the most creative. Now, I'm not saying you have to be in pain, but I am saying that there's a sort of an understanding and an inspiration from coming from the understanding of human desire and human, you know, disappointment and human drama and bringing that all to the surface in a very sort of mystical and magical way that, that creates for you, creates independence, creates the world that you want. So, so I feel like you could be like one of those creative artists who takes your personal pain and turns it into the most amazing song or the most amazing novel or something like that. But you don't, it doesn't have to be that. But there's inspiration that you drive that, that turns the, the difficult, the painful, the emotional into something that is very materially beneficial. So that's there's something in that that you do. So let's see what people see of this secret advantage. Pile three. The Eight of Cups, Judgment, the Ace of Wands, Strength Reversed, Nine of Cups, Page of Cups. Do you know what I, I thought as I put this down? It's just an example. But seeing like the Eight of Cups, you know, people see the sort of movement away and judgment, the decisions that you make when you need to move away from things. I was thinking about people say Taylor Swift often writes about her exes. So I wonder, it's, it's that kind of sort of energy. It doesn't have to be quite as personal as that. But it looks to me like people see the judgments that you make when you need to move away from things emotionally. I think there's something in what you, you communicate artistically or otherwise and what the new energy and the new passion is. is this, they sort of see that process. And I think they see that you you rebuild your strength as a through doing this, through leaving something that isn't working, making that clear judgment and going to something new, that it's a process of kind of regaining strength and you get a strength out of it that then brings in what you do want and you can then define better what you want. So there's a sort of a process of almost you experience the thing and then you do something creative or you express it in some way to others. It's very, very entertaining and very emotionally resonant and as a result you get closer and closer to what it is that you do want so there's almost a process of like emotional refinement that they see so what do you keep on the down low what don't they see of your secret advantage par three six of wands ten of cups eight of wands seven of wands reversed page of wands that this is highly creative and highly passionate like that's four wands cards and then the ten of cups like you really do know creatively what you want you really do know passionately what you want whether this is in love whether it's in creativity more generally you do know you do know and you are you have this is a process that's taking you there. So people may think that, the, again, if you're a creative person, this is just your creative process, but this is actually taking you towards more and more and more that you would be passionate to and more and more of what you would want to be happy with over time. You're not quite yet feeling that you can go for the grand prize. You know, you're sort of like working your way there, but boy, you're, you're, you're getting there quickly. And, and you can see the acclaim that's coming. You can see the victory. You can taste it. So I think it's almost like people sort of see you processing pain, disappointment or whatever and becoming clearer and clearer on what you want emotionally and sort of then helping them as well too, showing them almost a template for how to do that. They want to, they want to do this. You're very, very compelling. You're very, very inspirational. But boy, you are ambitious and you are going to get what you want. You are. You absolutely are. So that makes you very interesting for the, the remaining part of this because I firstly was doing a triptych of trilogies and then, as I say, we're going to do the fairy blessing. But, but the trilogy is firstly three wild cards that either could be more of your allure or could be things that you need to be aware of to most, most make take advantage of your secret advantage, so to speak. Then we're going to look at fortune energy and then we're going to look at astrology. So firstly, the wild cards for you, pile three. Journey, a physical or spiritual journey. Yeah, you're on a journey. And gee, it's going to speed up. You're not, you're, you are hiding a little bit that you're not entirely sure yet of, of how high or how far you could go, but boy, it's going to speed up. And, and you, you know, you're ready to go on this journey. You're kind of raring to go on this journey. 
Take a leap. Leap and the net will appear. Take a chance, yeah. You're not, you're almost there. You're almost at the point you're going to do this. You can see it. As I say, you can taste it. And wisdom. The combination of knowledge, experience, and intuitive understanding. Yeah. You really do have it. And this is what how the inspiration's coming through. You have experienced things as part of why you've, you've developed almost this process to get more creatively pure and to bring in your will and the kind of life that you want. So there's knowledge and experience there, but also your intuitive and your inspirational energy. Let's see the fortune energy that you need to be aware of, Pile 3. The dragon, strength and wisdom. That's funny, that came up for another here. So some of you might have come to, to two, but that's a very strong guide. And again, wisdom. There's something very wise in what you're doing. It's why you're going to succeed. You really are. <laughs> like, that's very, very clear. The siren, a temptation may lead you astray. So that's about the only thing that you need to be aware of is if if there could be sort of something like that gets beguiling that takes you off your course. But, but, you know, if you're aware of that, you're not likely to have that. And you do have the sort of strength and wisdom to move past that. And this may, in fact, be the wisdom here operating. There might be something right now that you haven't sort of talked about to anybody and you're not sure if it's the right thing. If you feel that, go with your intuition and knowledge. You're likely to be right. And the seer, follow your intuition. Yeah. So... Either right now or soon, I think there's going to be something where you're going to you're going to say, "Am I ready for this? Is this the right thing?" Pay attention to that because it would take you astray. You are going to win ultimately, and you don't have to hurry that much. You are going to get there, but pay attention to your intuition because because there's a high stakes thing around this for you. I think you're going to be very very successful, and with that comes different sorts of. Isn't that funny? I sort of had a sound on my phone that sounds like ka-ching. So <laughs> I think that is. I don't know if you heard that, but that that's probably. The world, you know, the spirit world saying, yes, you are going to be successful. So it's, you are going to potentially also then attract people who want to tempt you under those circumstances. So let's see what astrology energy can help you. Conjunction. Okay. Connections with others is going to be important. Partnerships are going to be important. So, so this is a lot about your creative journey, but partnerships, particularly to be happier and, and have passion in it, is going to be important. We have Virgo, yeah, and it's meant to be a business or it's meant to make you money in some way. Or, you know, to, to sort of make you feel healthy and content in your life. And the waning gibbous moon, the calm after the storm. So you might have just gone through this temptation as well too and you've come out of it. Or whatever it was that sort of stirred up the disappointment that then became the creative energy. There's a sort of a process and you know the calm after that where you create. Okay, so to finish up, we are going to get you a blessing from the fae. And as I said, given at the beginning your colour energy was connecting with the fairies, I think this is going to be a particularly important message for this reading for you. So, a blessing on the heart's calling. Okay, I do think for some of you, this is also to bring in the love of your life if you haven't already. Like there's definitely a sense of that. But beyond that, this is you going towards your ten of cups, your nine of cups and your ten of cups. You are going towards that. You're meant to, to almost create and speak or sing or something like that into being what this is. This is a blessing to bring that in. You know, your, your willpower, your intuition, your emotional sort of balance, your emotional strength, all of that kind of thing connected with, with the blessing of the Fae and your intuition, your really powerful intuition. As I say, you are going to. You are going to have your heart's calling. That's why it's saying you're going to succeed. So I hope you enjoyed that reading, Pile 3. I hope it resonated for you. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings.